Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, and returning to the circle is board-certified family physician and culinary medicine specialist, Dr. Lauren Powell. How are you? I'm amazing. How are you? Girl, you're looking good. I know so that much. You. Well, thank you, girl. I try my best. All right, so let's get right into it. This month is Colorectal Awareness, Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Tell us what colorectal cancer is. So colorectal cancer is basically an abnormal growth of cells anywhere along the colon. Okay, and what causes it? So many things cause yeah. it. So there have been some links to genetics, there have been some links to lifestyle, there's been some links to food. Um, definitely having a family history is a strong risk factor. Okay, okay, so who's at greater risk? Were people at family history or who's at greater risk overall? So overall, African Americans tend to be at a higher risk. Mm -hmm. We're at a higher risk of getting the disease and when we get it, it's bad. Oh, okay. So um, greater than the age of 50, African Americans, family history, and then of course we're gonna talk about some food that puts you at increased risk as well. Okay, now and you are a culinary doctor, which is great. Now, is there a direct correlation between diet and colorectal cancer? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So what is that? So there's been some studies and definitively there are increased risk, things that put you at increased risk for colorectal cancer and things that decrease your risk. Ah. So increased risk, things that we want to definitely stay away from. Those are our refined starches. That's that white flour, the white rice, the white bread, mm -hmm. um, the processed foods, those things that are high in animal fat and animal saturated fat, like the hot dogs, the deli meat, I'm sorry, oh, wow. the breakfast sausage, the bacon, I'm sorry, I know that hurt people's feelings. Oh my, I'm doing <laughs> everything wrong in the house then, my goodness, okay, so but, what can we but do? But then there's things that decrease your risk, so right. studies have shown if you eat a diet that's high in vegetables, high in fruits, high in whole grains, high in fiber, you decrease your risk by 20%. Okay, all right, so we talked about some preventative measures, what are we going to be making today? So, we are going to make a delicious, green smoothie that is full of B vitamins and calcium and vitamin D and antioxidants, all the things that decrease our risk of colorectal cancer. All righty, that's yum maliciousness. Okay, what are we doing first? So I'm gonna go ahead and let you add these vegetables here. Uh, oh, so we've got these? some kale, you have some kale. All right, all, all of it? All of it, yeah, okay. let's put it all. Listen, there's no limits to vegetables when it comes absolutely. to our smoothies. Absolutely. You can put as much as you want, so that's a couple bundles of kale. I'm gonna add some coconut water, and coconut water is great because it's Mother Nature's natural mm -hmm. uh, Gatorade. There's full of electrolytes. It keeps yes. you nice and well hydrated. So I'm just gonna blend this down to make some room in our blender. Okay. Perfect, that's all we need. Really? That's it, yep. So now I'm gonna add the fruit. So I've got some pineapple, I'll hand you the pineapple. Yeah, delicious, that always makes full it so good. Full of vitamin C and antioxidants. Yes. And then I've got some mango for us. All right. I'll just do a little bit of mango. And then I've got a nice banana, potassium. Mm. And then we've got chia seeds. Chia, chia seeds. seeds are full of fiber and healthy fats. So that's great. Awesome. And, and that's what, like a tablespoon? Yes, that's yeah. about a tablespoon. And listen, if you can tolerate more, it's more of a texture thing for people. Chia got seeds it. don't really have a taste, but for some people, it just kind of creates a weird texture. Okay. So now we can just go ahead and blend this, and then we'll be able to taste it. Yeah, maliciousness. So what are the benefits? Okay, let me go ahead and blend that first. So it's making beautiful colors. Yes. Yummy. This is gonna be delicious. Okay. Well, we know what it would look like this. Yes, <laughs> this is the finished product. Yes. So. This is oh, awesomeness. Wow. So what about these ingredients uh, are, are beneficial, Specific these specific ingredients? So the kale that we use, that's full of B vitamins. That's our B6 and our folate. That significantly decreases. Mm. Yeah, it's good, right? It's so good. <laughs> that significantly decreases our risk. Okay, we've got um, antioxidants with our vitamin C. We've got calcium. We've got vitamin D. All these things have been shown in studies to decrease our risk of colorectal cancer. Yes. Really, any cancers, but colorectal cancer specifically. When do we get our first screening of colorectal cancer? And that's something that you have to request? No, it should be, you know, it should be part of a normal, you know, when you go in for your preventative exam. So when 50 for sure, we're starting our colorectal screening. Now, if you're African American, because the risk tends to be so great, and when they have the disease, it tends to be really bad, we start you at 45. Okay. Now, if you have a family history, we definitely have to have a conversation because you may be started earlier. It's going to be dependent on the age of your relative that had colorectal cancer ah, and diagnosis. So they need to know all the history. They need to know their history, right? Yeah. So if you if you say, hey, my, my father had colon cancer at age 40, I'm going to screen you at 30. I'm starting yes. at 10 years before. Yes, but you have to make sure you know that information. Yeah. Explain the different types of screenings that we could have. So there's tons of different types. Col the colonoscopy, which everybody is well aware of, 
a little bit more invasive, but it is the most thorough. Okay, and then we have our virtual colonoscopy, which is going to be more of imaging from the outside. There's other tests we can do where we test the stool for blood and different types of DNA. And then flexible sig sigmoidoscopy, which just kind of looks at the bottom of your colon. Wow, now which test is less invasive? So definitely imaging, um, you know, looking at the stool and the DNA, that's definitely less invasive, but it's just not as thorough. Okay. So I always tell my patients, I'm sorry, I want you to have a colonoscopy. Yes. Hey, how yes. are you? Hi. 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 Please taste, please yes, taste. Yes, I've been eyeing so these. There's nothing about life inside of this. Thank yes. you. Let me know what you Ooh. think. Let me know what you think. Mm -hmm. It's so yummy. It's Isn't that good? So it's like a little fresh, right? That's yes. the coconut water. It gives it that real fresh. Yes. Yes. It's delicious. It this is. is my breakfast. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It's super filling. You, you can have it hydrated. as a meal. Mm -hmm. yes. Your colon will love it. That stomach will be nice and flat. Yes. yes. Give me some more. Awesome. Well, Dr. Lauren, thank you so much. Thanks Always so. giving us the great tips that we need. Uh, for more tips on how you can maintain a healthy colon, visit drlaurenpowell.com.